I've now defined the two major operations of the course, integrals and derivatives. I've used them to solve differential equations, which are the big idea that ties the course together. For the remainder of the course, I want to use derivatives to talk about the behavior of functions. I said early on that calculus can be thought of as the study of the behavior of functions. Certainly, solving differential equations is matching functions to certain descriptions of change, determining certain functions by set behaviors. It does all come back to knowing how functions work, to understanding their behavior. This week and the next will be about a number of specific tools to do this. One part of the behavior of functions is extrema, places where a function is at a minimum or a maximum. This is, of course, a pretty common problem. For many models in many situations, the goal is to maximize or minimize something. Minimize the rate of disease infection, maximize the production of a desirable industrial item, minimize the growth of a dangerous parasite, minimize the production of a dangerous result of a chemical reaction, maximize the growth of an endangered species, and so on. So let me start with a definition. What is a maximum and what is a minimum? Well, there are two types. A point on the graph of a function can be written c f of c. This point is a local maximum if it is greater than or equal to other nearby values. Likewise, it is a local minimum if it is less than or equal to other nearby values. Local means just in a little region. These are going to be the minima and maxima that I'm going to focus on for the rest of the week of videos. There is the related idea of a global maximum and a global minimum. The definition is the same, except it isn't just about nearby values, but about all other possible values. The word global means over the whole domain of the function. These are a bit harder to find in general. Note before I move on to the method that the inequalities here are inclusive. A maximum is allowed to be the same as nearby qualities, quantities in this case, all of these would be maxima. This may seem counterintuitive. Shouldn't a maximum be strict, actually larger than nearby values? Well, maybe it should, but this defin ac definition actually fits the algorithm that I'm going to develop. If you want a strict maximum, you'll have to specifically check later to see if nearby points are actually lower. So I know what a local minimum and a local maximum is. How do I find them? Well, look at this graph of a function. It has two extrema, a minimum at this point and a maximum at this point. What is noticeable about these points? Well, they have horizontal tangent lines, which I've drawn here. Moreover, none of the other points have horizontal tangent lines, and this is the key observation. The tangent line at a minimum or a maximum must have slope zero. That means that the derivative is zero, since the derivative is the slope of the line. So, to try to find a minimum or a maximum, I need to set the derivative equal to zero and solve. The solution is called a critical point. All right, say I do this. I calculate the derivative of a function, set it equal to zero, and solve to find the critical points. How do I know, particularly without having a graph or a visualization, whether a critical point is a maximum or a minimum? Well, I look at the intervals between the critical points. These intervals are also separated by any breaks in the domain of the function as well, so be careful. Between critical points, the function is either increasing or decreasing. If the derivative is positive, the slope is upward, so the function is increasing. If the derivative is negative, that means the slope is downward, so the function is decreasing. And finding this is called finding the intervals of increase and decrease, and these are pretty valuable to find on their own. But now, how do I use them to determine minima or maxima? Well, consider a critical point and the intervals on either side. If the function is increasing on the left and changes to decreasing on the right, that means that the function grows up to the critical point and then decays away. Well, then it must be a maximum. Maximum is identified by the switch from increasing to decreasing. And similarly, if the function switches from decreasing to increasing, it is going down and then going up. The critical point must be a minimum. A minimum is identified by the switch from decreasing to increasing. Finally, it is possible the function doesn't switch behaviors at the critical point. It may be increasing both before and after, or decreasing both before and after. 
In this case, the critical point is neither a minimum or a maximum. This can happen. Geometrically, this means the tangent line is just momentarily leveling off, but the behavior is still consistent. The cubic f of x equals x cubed is the standard example of this. It has a zero slope tangent line at zero, zero, but this is only momentarily leveling off between two intervals of increase. It is a critical point, but not a min or a max. So let me summarize the algorithm. To find a minimum or maximum of a function, I follow these steps. First, I calculate the derivative. Then I set the derivative equal to zero and solve for the critical points. Then I split the domain up using these critical points. Notice that this is the domain. If it are, the domain already has various pieces, I am splitting up those pieces further. Then I look at the resulting intervals. I test the derivative on these intervals. Positive is increasing, negative is decreasing. This produces the intervals of increase and decrease. Finally, I use these intervals of increase and decrease to classify the critical points, to determine when there is a minimum and when there is a maximum. Here is an example. I start with a function f of x equals x squared plus 2. I calculate the derivative, 2x. I set it equal to 0, which gives x equals 0, and this is the only critical point. The domain is all real numbers. I split up the domain with the critical point to get two intervals, negative infinity to 0 and 0 to infinity. Then I test the derivative. I can test at any point in each interval. I'll choose negative 1 and 1. The derivative of negative 1 is negative 2, which is negative, so the function is decreasing on this interval. The derivative at 1 is 2, which is positive, so the function is increasing on this interval. The function switches from decreasing to increasing, so this is a maximum. This is an upward opening quadratic, sorry, this is a minimum, my apologies. This is an upward opening quadratic, so finding a minimum at the vertex makes sense. Here's another example, a cubic this time. I take the derivative and set it equal to 0. The derivative is a quadratic, and this one factors the roots are 2 and negative 3. The domain is all real numbers, so I split it up with 2 and negative 3. This produces three intervals, negative infinity to negative 3, negative 3 to 2, and 2 to infinity. I test the derivative on each interval, testing at negative 4, 0, and 3. I put those three values in the derivative, 6x squared plus 6x minus 36, for negative 4, the result is positive. For 0, the result is negative. And for 3, the result is again positive. Therefore, the intervals are increasing, decreasing, and then increasing again. Then I can classify the critical points. The first is a maximum, switching from increasing to decreasing. And the second is a minimum, switching from de decreasing to increasing. So here is a picture of this cubic, with the minimum and the maximum labeled. This is a typical cubic shape, and I am not surprised to see a minimum followed by a maximum here, or rather a maximum followed by a minimum here. I've calculated the y value to draw this. However, in general, I'm usually content if you just provide the x values for min and max on assignments and exams.